character, the hazard and star is Martin, a mysterious man who lived at the end of the marsh. He's a religious person, fix people's things, and tell children stories. The second one is Alea, a girl who visits Martin every day and cares for him. We also have the children. Kids from the pier bring food or coffee and listens to Martin's stories. The other character is Clover, a lonely orphan, a friend of the animals, and became the princess of Hazaran. We also have the grasshopper, an antic friend of Clover, and help to learn how to answer the guard of Hazaran's questions. There is also the beetle, an antic friend of Clover, and help to learn how to answer the guard of Hazaran's questions also. We also have the man who comes to the village, a guard from Hazaran that questioned Clover. And lastly, the government officials. A group of people come to the pier and announce that they will destroy the place to build the city of future. So the settings of the story is at Frenchman's Pier, Martin's Hut, and in Hazaran. The Frenchman's Pier is not a town, but a place full of shops made of live wood, tar paper or dirt. Italians, Slavs, Turks, Portuguese, Algerians, Africans, Stones, Masons. Laborers and peasants who are looking for a job or want to settle temporarily inhabited the place. Moreover, this place was near the swamp and bordered by an estuary. People here could build a shop with just a few hours. And so, those who live seal their wooden planks so all that it holds in it and use old rags to cover it. And if lucky, plywood for roof and or large tar paper, if to find it, yeah, this is the place where Aliyah live. Aliyah live on the wayside of the pier, near Martin's house. Four years ago, her father and brother died due to an accident. She was too young and only knew but to play with other children. Hence, her aunt took her in. When she arrived on the Princeton Pier, there were about 10 shacks at the time. The soft ground covered with the large grassy fields, and at the edge of the swamp, rich grew. Now, the field has gotten larger. The story leaf bank covered with the dark paths, and shacks are so many that it's impossible to count. Each week, new families arrive and leave the field. Lia pump for water or buy at double off. She would stop and look for the new arrivals, searching for a place to set a camp. However, police sometimes come, keeping an eye or track that is coming and going. Ashley asked Martin why does he don't eat sometime Martin. He was fast, he didn't know what it was and asked. If it is like traveling, but Martin lands and explained that it was when someone don't spill eating a hundred, but she she talks about the children who get hungry without a food and those who stole food to eat as it he heard what Alia was thinking he explained that when a sting it means you don't like a food or water because of wanting something else that it's more important than drinking and eating and again Leah asked what does Martin like to have and he got after Martin had spoken to God, he already started his teaching, but no one knew it. His teaching style was like what a priest 
or a teacher you said to come had gun use of the firm by Martin has Lee and sitting on the ground to listen to his story story the children but instead in the children would sit up next to Martin and that's where Lee like to sit to Martin was happy to see them Martin tells beautiful story to beautiful the children called sleep before the ending of the story however of all stories of Martin Hazaran is what children like the most it was the story of a girl named Clover and named because a small mark on her left cheek that is near her ear Clover was so unfortunate to the point that she only eat some breads and fruits from trees and live in the shepherd's hunt amongst the rock and brown balls. She lives alone, so lonely and sad, yet she made friends among the small animals who live in the fields and visit Clover morning or evening. One day, Clover was sadder than as well because she had nothing to eat. Her friend Grasshopper called her out to hear and ask, if she want to change her life and and she could go to the Hazaran. Yet she needs to be a clever to answer the question from the guard of Hazaran. And Clover said Yes. The grasshopper and beetle teach Clover how to answer and be smart to be to the guard's question. The time comes when a man comes to, to the village and was looking for someone. Clover stepped up and said that she was what the man is looking for. The man said to her that if she could answer his question, she could become a princess of Hazaran. And so the man, she gives her three questions. All of the man's questions answered by Clover. The official was surprised in order the birds to carry Clover to the land of Hazaran. The land is so far that day they travel night and day. But when they arrived, Clover was amazed because of the beauty of the land. The birds of Hazaran welcomed Clover as their new princess and lead her to their king and nightingale. Since Clover can speak the language of animals, she learned to sing. She could answer the king. She takes the form of a chicken and fails to earth to see her friends and go back to Hazaran to become a princess. Children went home one by one and the story was over. Aliyah did not leave until the man went back to his castle and lay down on his mat to sleep. She always stayed behind in front of Martin's house. As Aliyah walked along the paths of the pier, her sadness swayed thinking of the day. Alaya would stop to watch them pass by, but she knew they were not coming to look for anyone when she went to get water at the pump. Serious-looking men were dressing formally, carrying small leather briefcases, and there were students. Some people asked a question where others could understand and don't even know why they were asking and jetting down and took photos like it is essential. People figured out that it was the, uh, the government official and student who were coming to take everything. So the government is decided that the purse should no longer exist because it was too close build, building and office. The student showed them the drawing of the new town that was to be built by the river. They were strange drawing with houses unlike anything anyone have ever seen before. The student could eat the, the, the town of the future. Their happiness was shown in their eyes and they made big art gestures because they had made the drawing. The government decided to destroy the fear and not anyone to stay. When Martin heard the news, he was not happy about it. He has no desire to live not in one of the houses in the town of the future. So he had built his castle. He started fasting then. Aliyah always brings 
and bread. And other children came. To bring in food, Martin still lying on his mat right next to him, wiping his face with a weight cloth to remove the dirt. And Martin drank some water. Only his eyes managed to smile for Aliyah, but Aliyah felt pain because she thought Martin was going to die. Martin got on his knees and was his face slowly then he shaved shaved up his beard and come here come is here he was in a hurry as if he had just woken up and the children to hurry and bring food for him Matt then he at and went back to his mat and was asleep. The children watched him. The government official announced that the departure will take place tomorrow morning. After that, the government trucks will come to take everyone to a new area where the city of the future will build. Aliya goes in the reeds near the river to hide and watch the sun goes down because the pier will be demolished. As Aliyah walked through the river, she arrived in front of Martin's hut and saw him standing there. Martin says he was looking for her and Aliyah asked him if he is believing. He replied to Aliyah, yes, and if she wanted to come with him, Aliyah was filled with joy and said, wait for me. She ran to the pier, shouting to follow her. And they were leaving. The crowd follows Aliyah, and everyone arrived in front of Martin's hut. Martin stood in the front of the crowd and started walking on the side of the river. People start following him, walking without any directions. But the people understand where he was going and not afraid anymore. Aliyah observed that the dark piece of the other bank and had no single light shining in it. So the conflict of the story is that people figure out that it was the government officials and students who were coming to take everything. So the government decided that the pier should no longer exist because it was too close to the runway and they needed the land to put a buildings and offices. The students showed them the drawings of the new town that was to be built by the river. They were strange drawings with houses, unlike anything anyone had ever seen before. The students called it the town of the future. Third solution, Martin asked Alea if she wanted to come with him and left the pier. Alea agreed and asked Martin to wait. She runs to the pier and called out all the people and to follow her. Soon, the crowd was in front of Martin's hut, and as Martin starts walking to the river, the people followed him, and so they left the pier. So the story is the first of the author's rendered compositions where children and adults can thoroughly enjoy because of its importance to the coexistence of diverse cultures and urban life. It may signify concern to somebody involved in adolescence or social studies. The social movement of focus on the environment and related integrative disciplines. 